In this episode of Lori's Main Inspirations, we're going to visit Michael Paul Sear and his Hollowell's Gallery Studio. It's kind of the same thing because he paints right there by the door. We'll see what he's painting and we'll visit him a few times, see how that evolves. And then we're going to go to his grand opening. We're going to visit the space, see this is where he does paint parties. But quickly, we're going to turn our attention to his new work. And see that portrait there? I noticed that while we were talking to him. And it turns out he is starting to do portraits and trying to push himself. Here's one he did of his father. And he's branching out, developing new skills. That's always interesting. Of course, we're going to see the art he's already done. And we're going to visit this one. Is He was working on that the very first time we met him. And I brought some friends with me to the gallery, and they bought this painting. And so we're going to see why they like that. And, of course, we're going to revisit the loon, and there's a great story that goes with that. So let's cue the real loons and get started. For years, my family's been coming to Maine, and my wife loves the place, and it's inspired a lot of her alcohol inks art. And now that she's retired and doing her art full time, we're looking for more inspirations. And so we're creating this series to share that search and just to share the things we love about Maine while we go look for more things to love. Hey everyone, so it's 4.37 in the morning. I'm starting the final editing on Michael Paul's episode. And I thought it was appropriate to start it this way because the first time we met Michael Paul, he was working on a painting. And that's how he normally is. That's how you'll find him most of the time. You walk into his gallery and he's there by the door working on something. And so he really likes to bring people into the process and actually lets people participate. And so I tried to capture a little of that. So we visited him over several days. We see him working on a painting and then go to the grand opening and we visit him after. And I don't know that it comes to an end. You certainly don't see the end result of that painting yet. At some point it'll, it'll be done, but... Uh, it, but that's okay because it's a process and he brings you in really more than most artists. He really invites you into the process. And so his visiting him is, is, is a very different experience. And I hope you get a sense of that. And I hope you like this episode. We met Michael Paul when filming our first Hollowell episode. And we just surprised him and didn't even let him put a better shirt on. But he was great to talk to. So we went back to see him working on a painting over time. Trying to do a loom. Just gonna start one off. This is my first sketching of it. So what I do is I take paint that I had left over from yesterday and I just do like a really light wash. I use turpentine, mm -hmm. people call it turpentine, mineral oils. And then I just do the background. For some reason, I just like what it does to the, the painting. It's an underpainting. And then I go over, my second layer is just to find what I'm gonna be painting. And I don't draw anything. I just kind of like go in with my dirty paint and whatever and I just try to um, put in what I'm gonna do so this is what I do I come down in the morning and then you know I try to do something different on a, pretty much on a daily basis I'm always doing a little a little painting got my opening coming up next week so I'm trying to I'm pushing myself right now to do stuff that I've never done before I've only been painting for about 11 years and I'm pretty much self-taught so my technique might be a little different than what somebody would tell you. I just, I know what works for me. And then I just take my whole canvas and I just take all of that paint and I just cover it. Hmm. And then we'll dry. And instead of having like a white canvas, it seems like it'll, it glows through as I start layering things. So I, I like to do it in thirds. So I'm gonna do like, the loon's gonna be a third of the painting and then the background will be a third and the water over there might be a third. So. I just think the composition works out better that way. I just like to layer it. The first few layers have a little bit of mineral oil in it. And then as I progress and add other layers, I do less mineral oil, more straight paint. So then you get the general idea. You just kind of get work on the background. Then when I'm painting, you know, like probably in an hour or so from now, it'll be a little different, but I just start off and then I pretty much make it my own. I mean, I, I go in and start doing things. I'll, I'll refer to them picture every once in a while but everybody has their own style and I just like to like just take maybe a color that most people wouldn't use and just add it there and it'll once I'm done it'll hopefully blend in 
And then when you want something to look deep, even like my girl over there, if you want a painting to go, you want to go into it, the background, you neutralize the paint. And mm -hmm. all you do by neutralizing it is, so it's not like a straight color, like a solid color. Mm -hmm. So you take your green or your yellows or whatever, and you just add maybe a little yellow ochre in there, and it'll create depth. It's fun. It's fun to, uh, when you start painting, you just kind of like look at things differently. You open your eyes. Try to have a focal point. So my focal point on this painting was trying to get your eye to go there, the diagonals going this way, and then the darks there. I try to have ev all four corners when I paint. I just like to have them all be different. So they're not, you know, even if it's a, just a sky going across, I might build clouds on this side and leave this more blue on this side. But I just like the corners to be a, be different. And I think So that's basically what I wanted to do. I wanted people to be able to come in, meet the artist. If they buy something, that's fine, but it's not. that's not what it's about. It's about me just painting and hoping that people will like my work. It's not for everybody. Every, I mean, I love all kinds of art, so. But um, it's so inspiring to go to like Monhegan or those places and see how the old, how the masters, whether it was going to Don Stone's house, which I did, walked into a studio and he was in there painting and his paintings were selling for tens of thousands of dollars. And he was there. So it's so cool to have the artist there and say, I just purchased this from this artist, or, and um, that's why I wanted an open door policy. Have people come in, and look what I'm, you know, ask questions. Gonna be, and I'm just trying now to get the darks in there. So before I start adding the color, just and then you can kind of tell. It's like, is the big too small? Is it, you know, does mm -hmm. it look like a loom? Do, you know, do, are you capturing that? So I'll just keep going in and layering it. And I always try to make, when I'm painting, I make my stuff like sometimes a little smaller than it needs to be because it's always easier to make it larger, not go add to it than mm -hmm. it is to make it too large, get that paint in there. Then you got the imprint and then you're trying to make it smaller. Sometimes you'll see that. So, you know, this is the stage where I just kind of like try to capture the image. I never use black, even if there's, um, black involved in the painting you just create your own black you add you know do your reds and your yellows and your greens and you mix it enough and then you can get your own hue and it's really kind of cool um it's easy to buy black it's easy to buy brown but i find it more interesting to just do it myself like when i'm doing a tree or something i'll use more like lavenders and stuff like that like i'm doing here and i don't know it seems like when you're with the finished product it, it kind of glows through little different than it was earlier. Just kind of like adding some, like I said, I don't put any blue in there, just kind of. So now I'm working on the background. Yeah. Bird looks a little dead right now, but it'll come to life, I hope, eventually. I'll probably gonna work on this for a couple more hours today, and I'll come back in tomorrow, and I'm gonna soften, probably soften the head out tonight, yeah. and then I'll come and work, start working on the body tomorrow. But right now I'm just trying to find some darks where there's shadows of the water. And like I told you earlier, I'll look, this is that yellow ochre. It looks like brown to people, but uh -huh. that's this color here. And you blend it in with green and it just kind of gives it depth. And I want the water to be really soft back here. So I just like every once in a while, I'll just go in and dip my brush in this madness I have over here. And then I just kind of like go over it layer 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 and eventually like just by adding some shadows underneath it, it, you know it'll look like little ripples and it's just by adding a, a stroke of color sometimes going you know underneath a dark spot and making it darker so now it looks like there might be a little wave going on there so that's what you do is or that's what i do anyways We went back to the opening on July 15th. We're happy to see he had a sign up now. And the place looked great. Lots of people there. And there's his partner, John, by the way. And we asked him, hey, what's up with the loan? Okay, so here we're, we're definitely yeah, a bit different. And I'll finish it up next week. All right. And so, you've got your, your loan here. Yeah, this is like the second coating on it. 
I just got them in there, but I haven't done like the feather details or any of that stuff and the water. So I'll, I'll work on that this week. I just needed to be open for tonight. So. Yeah. And then I put these up since you've been here. I think I, this is where I'm going to do my paint parties. So All if somebody right. wants to do like an acrylic paint party, I charge like 30 bucks a person and they choose whatever they want and we can do it right here in the gallery. So, yeah. As Michael Paul was explaining about how he does the paint parties and how he has these examples up so people can follow him, and these are all just the cooks, I couldn't help but notice the portrait behind him, and so I asked him about it. This is my Aunt Lee, who passed away quite a few years ago, and I had never done portraits before, and I was very um, scared to do it. And as you can see, it's not finished. I was working on it, then she passed, and I was giving it to my cousins to remember their mom. So we brought it up there for the funeral and had it displayed. And I'm like, it's not done. And I'll be honest with you. I talked to them and um, it just brought back so much, you know, sadness to them. So I kind of put it away and I found it just mm -hmm. like last week amongst all my other paintings. Sometimes you do that. You'll start a painting and whatever. And I brought it out and John's like, Look at her face, it's really good. I'm like, I usually don't do portraits. Maybe I'll start doing them. So he put it on here for me. He's like, you're opening, I want people to see it. He goes, I know it's not done. You know, don't look at it, you know, too closely, but. You, you, you do realize that I've probably been putting film of it already over you. But That's all right. <laughs> you do realize I'm about to look at it a lot. Uh, okay. That's all right. Because <laughs> it does, no, she's, her face, I think, is very lively. I think you've got, you got something there. And this was my very, very first one, absolute first. And I was so afraid to do it. And I know it's her and I loved her so much. She was like the best aunt. And she was just sitting there in a rocking chair and she had her hand up to her, she, she had her hand up to her neck. She has arthritis and she wasn't, you know, uh, she, along as with my dad, she had lost her sight. And I just wanted to do a painting of her when I found out she passed. So. I'm going to work on this, I think, in the next couple of weeks and see if I can finish it up. It's very similar to the one of my dad. I don't remember if you saw that. So I did this was my second one as far as doing a portrait. And he was sitting he was sitting at my sister's house. He was blind with diabetes. He was not doing well. And I just snapped a quick picture off my phone and I started painting him. And I had never painted him. And if you knew my dad, this is exactly how he sat. He loved the sun. It was in the middle of the winter. It was freezing out. But my sister had a glass door and he would just sit there and um his legs i mean it almost looks like he only has one leg but the way i did it but this is his bottom leg that's just the way he sat he had on his slippers and he always had his hands crossed and i wanted to really do his face like detail but when i got to that i looked at it and i'm like that's my dad it was so it was just one of those things where i knew it was him and i've had people classmates of mine have come in actually and said oh my god is that your dad and they haven't seen him in like in 20 or 30 years and i'm like yeah and that, that means so much to me so michael paul's sisters louise and marie were there and i i took him back where it was quiet and asked them to tell me what they think about the painting he did to their father and my brother one day took a picture, took a picture of him and to know of the picture know my father that portrait in it's there just, just captured my dad's yeah. soul it's 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 my dad. It's yeah. I still I still woman. see him. I get goosebumps. Yeah. I still see dad sitting yeah. in my front door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In that chair. Yeah. It's just beautiful. It is. Yeah. It is. Overall, I'd say the opening was a success. There were lots of folks there, good nibblies, but most importantly, great art on the walls. Michael Paul's done a number of studies of women gardening, and this one just has such vibrant colors. No wonder it had already sold. Another of these paintings spoke to my friend Crystal, and so she and her husband Pete bought it, and I asked her to explain what she saw in the picture, what she liked about it. So, I think this is what I, I, I feel like this is what I want to look like in the garden. I know that's not what I look like, but I also like the purple in here, and I just... I love the garden, and I know exactly Of course, we left some paintings for other people, and there's plenty left on the wall, and it wasn't so crowded that I couldn't take a moment to enjoy looking at the paintings, like this one, 
that he had been working on the very first time we met him. It looks really great. The following day, we came back to see what happened with the loon, and Michael Paul had an interesting story about that. I had a six-year-old girl in here who loves art, yeah. and I had just pulled up my, my loon, and I said, she goes, I love to paint. She, I'm going to go home and paint today. I gave her my paintbrush, okay. mixed her up some blue, and she put that all on there. Oh. And so she was just putting it on, and I was just kind of, I said, let me, I'll blend it. When you're ready for me to blend, let me know, and I'll blend it in. And that's what we've come up with. So this is a loon, last time we saw it was Saturday. Yeah, and you can almost kind of see right here where the loon head was. And okay. then the body was kind of like too close to the edge. So if you look at the original ones. So Saturday had this young girl and her mom come in, you would have loved her, she was six years old. Okay. And her name was JJ and I put her up on the stool and she was looking at it, she goes, I love that bird. And I said, well, you want to, you know, come closer. It was all wet, now it's all muddy. So I gave her a paintbrush. And it was all green, if you remember the background. Mm -hmm. So I said, I want to put some water in there. I gave her a paintbrush, put some blue on there, and she just, I said, go anywhere on the, on the canvas that you want other than on the loom. I said, because it'll be tough. She went and put some blue on there. She put a big blue spot right here in the corner. Yeah. It was like a big square. And I said, what is that? She goes, it's a piece of toast floating in the water. And I said, but it's blue. Because it's got blueberry jam on it. I said, oh my God. I said, well, do you mind if we, you know, it's, you probably won't see a piece of toast with blueberry jelly floating in the water. Can we just, you know, she goes, yeah, we can blend it. Because I was talking to her about blending, right? Mm -hmm. So she took the brush and we went in and we started to blend. So then I told her, I said, well, I think we're going to change the loon around if I can. I said, because... He looks like he's coming off the, the side. And I said, and I want to have a background. So I took this picture out. And I said, I think we're going to do that instead. So I let it dry. Then he, I came in yesterday and I repositioned him. You can almost see where his head was there. But just so he's not quite as big. And hopefully he'll, he looks like he's sitting in the water a little bit better. Once I work on him today. Now at the end of the day, it's going to look totally different. So because I haven't done anything here. I'm gonna add the colors. I just wanted to get his outline and then work on the horizon. I'm gonna leave that really soft. So just look at like there's trees in the background, maybe at the lake. So that's what I'm doing today. Hmm. So it's gonna to look totally different than what you guys saw last week, but that's what I love about it. You can change it, you can switch it out, you can make it your own. So that's where I'm at right now. Well, that's where we're at too. And that's where we're gonna have to leave it. Didn't quite get, all, I had a lot of stuff to use. And it kind of had to sort it out. It went long anyway. Michael Paul, very interesting. If you're ever in Hollowell, definitely want to visit his studio, meet him, see what he's up to. So next week, we're gonna be going to one episode a week now. And so our next episode will be out next Friday, uh, July 29th, and it will cover Damascata. We're gonna go to the, village. We're going to see the place. Uh, we're going to take the river cruise and we're going to visit the Peace Gallery, which has a lot of veteran art. Very interesting. So I hope you'll join us for that. But right now I'm going to leave you with some footage from a beautiful May morning. Not this one because I was busy, but uh, really pretty footage that I got the other day. I hope you like it under the credits. <laughs>